This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Holder, it's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to another Sports Catastrophe on this day. And we started a brand new month. We're two thirds of the way through 2023. Now it's September. And this moment starts September 1st. It's 1996. As the Baltimore Ravens are playing their first game as the Baltimore Ravens against the Oakland Raiders. Odd how the Raiders were the opponent for both the first game in Baltimore as a Ravens from the Browns to the Ravens and the team formerly known as the Houston Oilers to the Tennessee Oilers. I did that yesterday. Regardless, Baltimore got their football team back, NFL team back after 12 years of losing it. The Baltimore saga was huge. And this game at Camden Yards, Memorial Stadium at Camden Yards, happened. Anyway, the Cleveland Browns were once one of the greatest football teams around. They were AFC champions, not AFC, but AAFC champions, because that was a rival to the NFL in the late 40s, which saw Cleveland, San Francisco, and another team, I think Brooklyn, get added on to the NFL roster for 1950. Cleveland didn't buckle their NFL between 1946 and 1955 they went to every championship game in the AAFC or NFL such was Cleveland's thing that Burt Bell who was owner of the Eagles but still commissioner of the NFL decided to put the Browns against the Eagles on a, in a night game on opening week and Cleveland beat that shit out of Philadelphia who were the defending NFL champions and then they got their respect Cleveland's Last one at title in 1964, and it went from there. They tried in the 80s, they were good, but those pesky Broncos got them through via the drive and the fumble. But uh, Cleveland was hemorrhaging money because, let's face it, Cleveland Stadium was a dump. The tribe were moving to Jacobs Field. Well, now no progressive field, but still. But anyway, the whole thing with the Cleveland Browns was huge. Art Modell wanted a new stadium. Cleveland refused, and it was a huge thing going on all that. So anyway, Cleveland had their issues. Art Modell decides to move the team to Baltimore for the 95 season. Baltimore was looking forward to getting an expansion franchise for the 95 season. Yeah, it had a good package and all of that. And then Carolina and Jacksonville got the expansion teams of Baltimore. It was miffed and all of that. Anyway, there was a lot of problems and all that with, say, Baltimore. Because Paul Tegubu actually was not too pleased. And then you know it's just huge and all that. Tank of Blue being a bitch and all that to the city of Baltimore. But Baltimore found that Cleveland wanted to move. So financially they got the stadium. Well they kinda got the stadium. So the Browns moved to Baltimore very controversially. Cleveland fans were not too pleased. And let Arnold Dell know it. So the Baltimore Ravens were born and the NFL would be coming back to Baltimore after a 12-year hiatus in which the Baltimore Colts left in the middle of the night on Mayflower trucks to Indianapolis. And Indy had this gorgeous stadium, the Hoosier Dome, and all that. So, anyway, Baltimore would have to play a Memorial Stadium, where the Orioles used to play, until a new stadium was built. But on February 8th, 1996, it was actually an agreement came from the city of Cleveland and Baltimore to say that the or Baltimore could not be called the Browns because Cleveland would retain all history, name, and colors to remain in Cleveland, including records and the Pro Football Hall of Fame players thing. So that meant the Raven, Baltimore had to change their name and they became the Ravens and all that. And it was also an agreement that there would be a Cleveland expansion team in a sense, a Cleveland team would be would re, would retain play in 1999 potentially, and that the Ravens would be technically a expansion team. That agreement helped 
matters and moved everything along. Now, of course, there was trouble. There was another football team in Baltimore called the Baltimore Stallions of the CFL. Of course, the CFL wasn't was trying to keep money alive and decided, you know what, we're going to get some teams south of the border. It kind of worked and it kind of didn't work. Of course, the the Southern teams were, the U.S. teams were sucky, except for Baltimore. Every team in the CFL U.S. suffered through some massive thing. Baltimore did not. The Baltimore team got to the 94 Grey Cup final, lost to BC on a last second field goal by Louis Pesaglia, and then in 95, they won the whole thing against Calgary. Holy St. Laurent. But Baltimore wanted to use its finances for the NFL team and also helped by the fact that the CFL pulled their teams out of the United States meant that Baltimore didn't have anything. But there would be a silver lining. Unlike most teams like Memphis, Shreveport, and Birmingham, Baltimore had a happy ending when the, C when the CFL US crumbled. They were bought by a Montreal businessman, Jim Spanels. I think that was his name. I can't remember. Regardless, Montreal had their franchise back. Montreal had to give, give up their CFL franchise in 1987, despite all their massive history winning great cups left, right, and center, and being big in the 50s, and 60s, and 70s. But Montreal, after a nine-year hiatus, got their CFL team back, and it worked out, as the Alouettes got the Stallions players. Almost all of the Baltimore players moved to Montreal and played. Because, you know, you had Mike Pringle and Tracy Hamm become mainstays of the Alouettes. And three years later, in 1999, I decided after Doug Flutie left the Argos for Buffalo, no matter how you slice it, I was still upset that Flutie left for this CFL, NFL. I decided to be an Alouettes fan and have not looked back since. Regard so regardless, it is a 1 o'clock game, Raiders, Ravens, the Raiders would be coached by Mike White. It's weird how the Raiders had weird coaches in the 90s. They had Joe Bugle in 97, and then Mike White for this game against Ted Marchabroda, who actually coached the Baltimore Colts way back in the day. So anyways, an interesting game at Memorial Stadium in front of 64,000 fans. And yeah, the, if you're watching this and you see the picture, the Ravens logo looks a whole lot different. That's what they wanted. The weird shield and all that. But they would change it to the Raven head. Baltimore would score the first touchdown of their lives on a Finney Testaverde nine yard rush. Can you believe it? Finney Testaverde. That's right. Testaverde, the number one pick back in 1987. Journey Manford, like Tampa, and a few other teams. Then went to Cleveland and was their quarterback with, in that 95 season. Matt Stover, extra points. Say bump. However, the Raiders came back with two touchdowns as Billy Joe Hobart, former Saints quarterback, was the Oakland quarterback, and he threw two touchdown passes to Tim Brown. Cole Ford kicked the extra point, 14-7. pair of field goals in the third quarter made it 14-13. Silver. And then Ernest Biner, yes, that Ernest Biner, the man of the fumble, infamy in 1987. Ran for a touchdown. They met, went for two, and missed. Fortunately for the Ravens, that was the final point of the game as the Ravens won 19-14 to send Oklahoma unhappy. So the Ravens were favored by a bit. Billy Joe Hobart went 17 for 26, 192, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Running game sucked. Harvey Williams had 39 yards at leading the Ra Raiders. Receiving wise, Tim Brown had only four catches for 31 yards, but two touchdowns. And the funny thing is, yesterday, I talked about Tim Brown's three-touchdown performance for the Raiders when they faced the Tennessee Oilers in the first game, first NFL game held in Tennessee. But yeah, two touchdowns there. Passing-wise, Finney Testaverde for the Ravens, 19 for 33, 254. No touchdowns, but no interceptions. Rushing, he actually ran for 42 yards, almost was the top runner, but Ernest Biner had 43 yards. And then receiving-wise... We had Michael Jackson, not that Michael Jackson. Brian Kinchin and Garrick Alexander getting some good yardage. So the interceptions were by Ray Lewis, who was making his Ravens debut because the Ravens drafted Ray Lewis in the first round of the 96 draft. He had some off 
the field problems, but the Ravens decided to draft him anyhow. And Antonio Langham, the man who made the famous strip in the 1993 national title game between Alabama and Miami. So yeah, so that was great. Great to see. And all that. So yeah, Baltimore got their football team back. And it was amazing and all that. The Ravens would have had some growing pains. But five years later, they won the Super Bowl in 2001. And Cleveland fans have been pissed off ever since. Well, they have a reason to. The Ravens hornswoggled the Browns. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.